Hello, I'm Terry Moran. We're coming on the air with breaking news right now. The United States has launched retaliatory airstrikes in the nation of Yemen in the Middle East against Houthi rebel groups in that country. These U.S. airstrikes come in the wake of a slew of recent attacks by Houthi forces on commercial shipping vessels in the Red Sea, including one earlier today, disrupting trade through that critical passage, risking significant impacts on the world economy. And so tonight, the U.S. has retaliated in Yemen itself. Uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets striking Houthi targets in that uh, country. ABC News senior White House correspondent Selena Wang joins me now with the latest, along with ABC News national security analyst Mick Mulray. Selena, what do we know about these airstrikes at this hour? Well, we're just getting news that they have launched these retaliatory strikes against multiple Houthi targets in Yemen. The officials said that the strikes involve a mix of Tomahawk cruise missiles and fighter jets. Of course, now, Terry, this follows months of attacks on commercial shipping vessels in the Red Sea. And the U.S. and White House and other countries, they've been making clear for weeks, escalating their remarks that they will not tolerate these attacks. The U.S. had formed a coalition with 20 countries to try and stop these attacks and issued a statement recently condemning these attacks, issuing warnings. And earlier today, I was at the White House press briefing speaking to the National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby about how far the U.S. is willing to go. John Kirby telling me that the U.S. will do whatever it takes to deter and to defeat the threats coming from the these. All right, Selena, thank you very much for that report. I want to go to Mick. Uh, who, Selena just said this has been a goal of the United States to deter these attacks coming from Yemen, this Houthi rebel groups uh, that are launching attacks in the Red Sea. What's this about? And so far, deterrence hasn't worked. How big of a step are these attacks in Yemen itself? So, Terry, this was a long time coming and needed to happen, quite frankly. We've taken a lot of incoming, both uh, trying to defend the commercial shipping that goes through these key waterways. It's up to 15% of international maritime trade and about 40% of the world's energy supplies comes through these areas. So, and they've been attacking us. So hopefully we took the opportunity, not just to strike back at the launching uh, uh, sites of these type uh, weapons, which are all provided by Iran, I might add, but also the storage facilities. So I hope we took out as many of them and really, really degraded their cap capability of attacking ships. I don't think this is going to be the end of it, but it was a long time coming and it really needed to happen. Uh, hopefully, uh, it will send the right message. But uh, from my experience, the Houthis basically never take the right message, but it really did need to happen. And Mick, is this really, a, are they operating as a proxy for Iran or do they have their own beef? So, Terry, I couldn't hear you on that. Uh, for some reason, uh, your sound cut off. No problem. I, are they operating? Are the Houthis operating as it's as the, the proxy? Okay. So, we, so Selena, let me go to you. What, are the, what is the administration telling you uh, about the rationale? Is this really a strike against Iran? And, and also, you know, will this do the trick? Are they planning more operations? Well, look, the Biden administration, they have been very clear that the Houthis, they will bear the consequences if they don't stop the attacks in the Red Sea. And according to the Pentagon, there have been at least 27 attacks since mid-November. And in fact, on Tuesday, there was a very severe barrage, the U.S. and British Navy shooting down more than 20 missiles and drones. So they have been clear, escalating the remarks that there will be some kind of retaliation to this. We don't know just how far they're going to go. Of course, the U.S., trying to thread the needle, as always, trying to contain this crisis, but also not wanting to escalate it. Well, that, that's a great point. Now, uh, Mick, if I can take that point to you, if you're back with us, what is the risk of escalation here? Iran on one side using the Houthis as a proxy, perhaps. President Biden trying to protect commercial shipping and American interests in that area. What's the risk, given the chaos and the crisis in the region, that we're edging closer to a wider war? So, Terry, this is exactly the balancing act the United States has been trying to do. We've sent multiple more assets, including two aircraft carrier strike groups. One had to return, but many more destroyers uh, to the region in an effort to deter Iran from using its proxies, which include the Houthis, which includes Hamas and Hezbollah and all the militias that are attacking our troops in Syria and Iraq, would deter them from doing these activities. But it seems like that did not deter them. Uh, it basically, they graded our own homework. They started the attacks more so than we've seen in years. So this is in an effort to degrade their ability to attack us. 
I don't know if it'll work. It unlikely will. But it was very important for the U.S. to take these these steps to show that we're not just there uh, to basically shoot down uh, attacks against us. We're going to fight back. It's part of the self-defense. It's certainly something we owe our troops, uh, specifically the sailors that are on these uh, naval asset, assets in the Red Sea. And this all comes back, in a way, Mick, to the, to the war between Israel and Hamas as part of the point of these attacks to get the United States to pressure Israel? Uh, or, you know, how does a war factor into this? That's right, Terry. So uh, the Houthis uh, claim that these attacks against the ships, including uh, seizing some ships, is to show their support for the Palestinian people. Uh, unfortunately, uh, these ships, a lot of them don't even have a nexus to Israel. There's mostly no Israelis on them. So there's a lot of people getting caught up in this. And every country around the world in some way is affected if the trade in this area, maritime trade, is ceased. They have to go around Africa. It causes about three weeks delay. It significantly increased costs. Every country in the world should see this as a threat and, and unacceptable. International waterways are for everybody. It's key to international trade. So much of the energy of the world comes out of this area. It shouldn't just be the United States. We have a 20... Uh, 20 nation coalition. It should be all nation coalition uh, to really push back against the Houthis using these Iranian supplied weapons uh, indiscriminately. If we were not there shooting them back, there'd be many uh, foreign uh, 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 people that would have been killed on these commercial vessels. And if it wasn't for the United States shooting these down and the UK, uh, that would have happened. So much at stake here. Selena, if I can go back to you covering the White House for us, uh, can we expect to hear from the president? This is a big step. An attack in Yemen. Uh, will the president be talking to the country to explain what's going on? As of now, we aren't expecting any imminent speech, but we should be expecting some sort of statement from the White House here. And I think Mick made a really important point there, which the U.S. has been stressing, is that this is a global issue. The Red Sea is such a critical waterway, and it not only threatens lives, it's also threatening the global economy. It's already starting to disrupt, in fact, in a major way, commercial shipping routes here. So really, the U.S. leading up to this has been setting the tone, setting the stakes here about why this is critical, why they need to respond. So now we are finally seeing that. And Selena, you know, President Biden obviously withdrew American troops from Afghanistan. He has been trying, as has, has have his predecessors, not to get the U.S. as involved in the Middle East so deeply. And yet here we are again after the Hamas attack on October 7th and these attacks requiring a response from the United States. This is tough for President Biden, especially going into a campaign. Yeah, it is tough. And as I said earlier, it's all about threading the needle here, trying to deter as much as possible while also not trying to escalate. And the U.S. involved in multiple conflicts around the world, of course, in the Middle East, but also in Ukraine. And the U.S. administration has said many times on a side related note here about why the U.S. needs to help fund and help supply arms and aid to Ukraine, because they say it's one thing to provide money, although that may be difficult here, but it's another thing if you have to pay and the cost of American lives, American troops in these regions. No question about it. Mick, I want to go to you. Uh, on, on the cost here for American interests, you know, the, are we getting, once again, inevitably, as we have been for decades, more deeply engaged in the Middle East uh, because of the war, because of the spillover from the war, than our national interests, you know, which require us to have a global perspective? It's just bad for the United States that we're, that we're so deeply involved. Terry, I think it's important for us to stay deeply involved in the Middle East, uh, both for the sake of our partners, of course, it's in our national in interest, but we're also competing against China and Russia, who would love it to see the United States withdraw from this region, because then they would take the opportunity to replace us and basically fill the void. So we have to have an international presence, absolutely. I'd say the highest uh, priority strategically is China, so the Indo-Pacific uh, region, but the, the Middle East has a way to basically keep pulling you back in. Every administration says they're going to pivot, and they never do. That's because it's so volatile and it's so important. Uh, so I think the United States is going to uh, do everything we can to maintain our presence here and certainly assist our partners and allies. There is a significant risk of this more expanding, specifically for the Hezbollah in the north. If Not only are you talking to senior people out here in Israel, where I am, but if you can talk to so many of this uh, uh, nation's country as part of the IDF, 
and they expect that to happen probably within March or April. They expect to be another front of this war. Hopefully that doesn't happen. The United States doesn't want it to happen, but I think many people out here believe it's inevitable. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.